is St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Charleston. It's really a beautiful gate here, and it's all wrought. Many people combine cast and wrought elements, but that doesn't take place here. One of the very most influential people in blacksmithing in America in the 20th century was Samuel B. Yellen. Let's go visit Jack Andrews in Philadelphia, and he'll tell us something about him. America has produced many great craftsmen, among them Samuel Yellen, a blacksmith of great reputation and perhaps one of the greatest influences on American blacksmithing in the 20th century. The man who's written the definitive work on Samuel Yellen is Jack Andrews, and we've asked him here to tell us a little something about this, this American master. Welcome to the program, Jack. Thank you. Tell us a little something about Mr. Yellen's history. Uh, when was he born? Okay. Well, he was born in uh, 1885 in a small village in Galicia, Poland. And uh, he grew up there at 12. He decided to, uh, what well, he wanted to work with his hands, so he apprenticed with a local blacksmith. And in five years, he got his master's paper and then started to move around the great European cities where the great iron is. Mm -hmm. uh, he had various odd jobs around Philadelphia. In 1909, he started his own studio, his own forge, with a few men. 1911, he opened another shop a little bit larger, better facilities, and things started to grow and started to happen. Mm -hmm. He met very important people. He was teaching at the uh, Pennsylvania Museum School of Industrial Art. It was then associated with the museum that we're sitting in. It's no longer associated with that. It's now the University of the Arts. But at any rate, he was teaching there, setting up this, uh, these shops, making contacts of all interesting kinds, mm -hmm. architects and important clients. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the important architects was Muller Meigs, uh, perhaps the most influential on him. And in 1950, Muller Meigs designed for him his own shop in West Philly at 5520 uh, Arch Street. Mm -hmm. Then things really started to grow and happen. Uh, to the extent of uh, 1922, he received the largest commission ever uh, done on for decorative wrought iron, similar to the pieces that we're talking about here, not structural at all. And this was the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, 200 tons of decorative wrought iron delivered to that site when it was finished in 1924. Wow. It took him roughly two years to do the whole job. In 1928, he had 256 craftsmen of various types and people working for him in his shop. And, in West Philadelphia. That's a huge number. How did he coordinate all those people? Was he, was he in charge? Was he? Well, he, he orchestrated the whole thing, and he did it by the people he assigned the various tasks to. The person in charge of the overall shot was Joseph Konetsky, and Konetsky then worked with the men in the other departments. Um, in, in forging, as an example, which was on the ground floor, there was Bacanero. As you go upstairs to fitting and the represé work, there was Winsy and other people. Even one department for just polishing, that is bringing the patina of these pieces out. Mm -hmm. He was Rossi. And so you had all of these men with their very specialized kinds of, of tasks and skills working to pull all of this together. So it was a real team effort. It was like a symphony orchestra, which it truly was, and Yellen had the baton. Yes. He was, and he was a... a designer, I think probably what people really uh, remember him for the most today is just the, the beautiful designs that he, that he um, right. came up he, with the, that the, are spread all over this city and <clears> others. Yes. Normally, they were about 10% of the workforce were in the design in the drafting room, actually creating designs and doing all the working drawings and things for the pieces before they would go to the shop. And Yellen would be constantly in there. There's always on these drawings you see the little notes uh, don't, don't use this one, or this is the one, and a little bit of a sketch here or there, what he would actually draw in. Mm -hmm. No, he was very intimately uh, involved with every piece. Now, uh, as I understood from your book, the, um, they did a full-scale drawing in charcoal of each, each commission. Correct. Um, and we've been trying to show people in our program, you know, how to, how to plan out a piece, and we've, we've shown them how to do it with clay yeah. and whatnot. But a full-scale drawing, that's quite an effort it's in and of itself. It's quite an effort, because some of the pieces were so large. As an example, in the drafting room, the ceiling was uh, 14 feet tall, and they had a long bar with nails on it, and, uh, which were sticking out, and they would put the drawing up on that, a charcoal drawing, so it looked like wrought iron. It was very good rendering. They'd haul it up, 
bring the architects and clients in and they would say go or no go or make corrections and changes. Oh, man, that's, that, that's wonderful because then you've got a much better handle on whether your client's going to, it knows what he's getting. Or that's not. right, and that was one of the keys about Yellen, this intimate contact with the architect and the client. He worked very closely with them. And uh, he was a very delightful person, very friendly, loquacious, very happy. And even though he did work closely with them, they tended to give him an incredible amount of freedom, didn't they? I mean, he... Exactly, exactly. In the case of the, um, the bank building, uh, the Packard building, uh, it was done by Ritter and Shea in 1924, you see a large uh, framework of stone, uh, 24 by 39, as a matter of fact. And on the working drawing, you see C. Yellen for gate details. So he, they let him just design it, it any it. way he wanted. It was his job. Oh, that's just incredible. And yeah. that's a truly beautiful gate. Yeah. Um, with that large a shop working for them, for him, hundreds yeah. of people, he must have, have left behind quite a legacy in terms of working blacksmiths. Um, what, what can you tell us about that? <clears throat> I mean, are, there, are there a lot, is there a clear influence of right. Yellen among In many groups? businesses, you know, that there's the place to go, the shop to work to, or the school to go to. Mm -hmm. Yellen was a place to go to work. Mm -hmm. But e even still, he has to be probably the, the prime influence in American blacksmithing. No one has really provided so many beautiful pieces uh, uh, to the American cities in, and universities. In my view, yes. I think you're absolutely right. There have been a lot of other smiths, but when you come to actually see the work that was done during this period, that is the building uh, revival period in the United States, where architects were building uh, the, the important universities, banks, and churches, like the Washington Cathedral, the Federal Reserve Bank job, and that type of thing, that the work that Yellen really wanted to do and loved to do was aptly suited to these buildings. So he was at a time and place, a critical juncture in history, which mm -hmm. was just great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Jack. You're quite very welcome. Interesting. Thank you.